this week, I'm back with three little words. Debate me, bro. Yeah, come at me, bro. This is not my party. Brought to you by The Bulwark. All over the internet, we're seeing lots of middle-aged white guys demanding that people debate them. And I'm kind of here for it. Let them fight. To start us off, Joe Rogan and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. are offering up a quarter milli to get vaccine specialist Dr. Peter Hotez to debate them about the COVID vax. I find radiation opens up your blood-brain barrier. For 18 years, nobody will debate me. It's like debating a Holocaust denier. Just, just don't do it. Some creepy Rogan fanboy even went to Hotez's house to try to bully him into debating Joe. So are you not, like, going to debate uh, RFK on Joe Rogan's podcast. Oh, come on. Peter, it's just a question. That's just creepy. Meanwhile, California Governor Gavin Newsom has been taking a break from his day job to call out Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And you better believe more debate challenges are flying. Stop pussyfooting around. Are you going to throw your hat in the ring and challenge Joe? Are you going to get in and do it? Or are you just going to sit on the sidelines and chirp? You would do a two-hour debate with Ron DeSantis. I'd make it three. Do it with one-day notice with no notes. I look forward to that. Oh, snap. But until these debates actually happen, I figured I'd referee a couple of the steamiest beefs. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Let's begin with Rogan and RFK Jr. versus Dr. Hotez. The pod boys who have absolutely zero medical background are targeting Hotez for promoting the COVID mRNA vaccine. Even though Rogan already got kind of roasted in this debate by Bill Burr. I'm not going to sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up better than the CDC. Should have ended that day. But the biggest podcaster on earth is hungry for more. And now he's got RFK Jr by his side. RFK is convinced the vaccine caused more deaths than it saved, and he's condemned it as the deadliest vaccine ever. Needless to say, this is bananas. Studies show that after the vaccine, excess deaths in our population were dramatically higher for people who didn't get the jab. It's just so weird. Look, there are definitely more nuanced, legitimate criticisms of people like Hotez and the medical establishment out there. For example, the original claims that vaccinated people weren't going to transmit the COVID virus. But that's not the angle Rogan and RFK are pushing. Well, this should be good. Instead, the new happy couple is convinced that there's some kind of conspiracy between liberal elites and big pharma to cover up deaths caused by the vaccine. And well, if you're going to believe that, you're too far gone to be persuaded by legitimate debate. You can't fix stupid. So on this one, the winner is Hotez. Next on the card, DeSantis versus Newsom. So I just want to get my biases out there. I find Ron DeSantis' culture war nonsense so unappealing that it's kind of hard to get past it. When it comes to whether gay parents and kids can have the same rights in schools, or whether it's okay for Disney to show a lesbian kiss, well, Gavin wins big, especially when you consider he was one of the first politicians in America to enshrine gay marriage as San Francisco mayor. Now that was a big deal. So let's set the culture war stuff aside, because the economic debate is more interesting. Gavin scores here when he points out that most of America's economic growth happens in blue parts of the country, specifically California. 71% of the GDP in America are blue counties. Seven of the top 10 dependent states Let's say are you're right. States. Hard to argue with that one. And he wins again on the topic of undocumented workers and DeSantis's handling of immigration. Fourth largest economy in the world. We can handle of course all you of can. this, okay? I'm a border state. Ron DeSantis is not. I know he's desperate to get in on the action. No, shoot these scores! But DeSantis DeSantis lands some legit blows when it comes to the population scoreboard and how NIMBYs and progressive policies have resulted in a lot of Californians leaving for cheaper states. Hello, build some houses, Gavin. California from its inception gained population every single year until he became governor. Ouch. Put it all together and Gavin might be ahead on the card, but their fight isn't over and the real showdown could be delayed a few years. To be continued. In the meantime, if I was still a California resident, I'd probably want my governor to focus a little more on the sky-high cost of living and a little less on delivering brutal loans. And if I were a DeSantis fan, I'd want him to focus his ire on the dude schlonging him in the primary polls and stop pussyfooting around, to borrow a phrase. You better get your priorities straight. So there you have it. And if any of the losers don't like my scoring, well, I got three words for you. Debate me, bro. Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. See you next week for more Not My Party. For more episodes of Not My Party, smash that subscribe button. And scan right here to subscribe on Snapchat, where you can get the episodes first and all the Not My Party content you desire.